I recently watched the movie Pig with Nicolas Cage, which is about a former chef that embarks on a mission to retrieve his kidnapped pig. And if that sounds a little bit like John Wick as a chef and he lost his pig, it's not. Pig is about life, the search for your creative passion, dealing with loss, and also the emotional power of food. Now, while watching this movie, I was reminded of other movies like Chef, Burnt, and even Julia and Julia. I just fell in love with the cinematography. It's so simple, but so elegant. And this got me thinking, how do you make food look like a movie? I think I figured that out and you're probably gonna be surprised at how easy it is. I've been developing this loose theory that YouTube and social media videos are making a lot of us bad cinematographers and probably specifically food cinematographers. There's just a distinct style of shooting that has become trendy for recipe videos and cooking channels that almost entirely contradicts how you should approach filming food for film and TV. And the best example of this is BuzzFeed's Tasty videos. Now I have to give them credit where it's due and that they've developed a look that is distinctly theirs and it's also been incredibly successful, but it's also unfortunately become the de facto aesthetic for these types of videos, and now I find it extremely boring and lifeless. There's definitely some channels out there like Pickup Limes and Joshua Wiseman who have their own thing going on and it looks great, but it looks great for YouTube and we're trying to make a movie. One major thing a lot of these online videos have in common is just flat lighting, or what I like to call, what happened to the shadows? And so the first thing I need to do is to stop over lighting everything because all we need to pull off this movie food scene is just one light. The opening sequence of Pig has Nicolas Cage making this mushroom tart in his little cabin. And what kind of struck me within this sequence is just how simple the lighting was. As I said, all you need really is one light. So if we pause this for a second, you can see right here, all of this light is just coming from that window. And this is just giving us such nice contrast. And I love how everything actually has shadows. There's depth and darkness to this image that is giving it us a look that we just don't see in typical food videos. Moving back over to this example from Chef, this movie also opens with John Favreau sort of feverishly creating a dish in his kitchen. And you can see the same principle applies here. So let's pause it real quick. You can see there's just one light source coming in from that window. And again, it's giving us so much contrast. And the big thing here is also just like we apply to all cinematography, you wanna to shoot towards your light source so that you get that shadow and that depth. Another bad habit that I'm totally guilty of from YouTube is using slow motion way too much and crazy editing swoops and fades and all that kind of stuff. And when you watch a movie, that just really isn't happening. Yes, there will be times when you'll see a little bit of slow motion, but Julia and Julia's sequences are just a great example of letting things play out in 24 frames per second. It feels real. It feels like you're actually in the room with these people while they're cooking and it feels super natural. So you can use slow motion if you need to, but I would just use it incredibly sparingly. It really pulls you out of the scene if things become too cinematic and too movie-like by using slow motion. Minor spoiler warning for Pig here, but most of what you're seeing is also in the trailer, so you're not really totally ruining the movie by watching this, but I wanted to bring it back to Pig and this specific sequence. I just love how dimly lit and dark and moody this feels, and so I wanted to do my own version of this kind of scene in my own apartment. And so I wanna show you now my version of a cinematic movie food scene. And afterwards, I'll break down some of my setups. And again, I'll tell you, it's all about dead simplicity. You do not need a whole bunch of gear to make this stuff look great. Thank you. 
So I'm going to use some of the raw clips from that sequence just so I can show you how easy this was to light. Now, I had some practicals in a lot of these sequences where, you know, whether it was lamps or the lighting from the kitchen itself, but for the majority of all of it, and really the only light I used that wasn't a practical light was this Nanlite Pavo tube. So I just sort of put it on different areas of my kitchen as I needed it, always shooting on that dark side. So I was just getting that contrast, but this light just became so malleable to pretty much any situation. And then augmenting it with this Ikea practical, this is like a, I don't know, $20 lamp that you can get at Ikea. It's really all I needed. I wasn't getting any natural light from outside because I shot at dusk. And honestly, this whole exercise of putting this video together just reminded me how much we've been overthinking lighting for almost every setup. Like you really got to go down to brass tacks of like, do I really need four lights? Do I need three lights? Maybe I only need one light. And I would also suggest getting off of social media and start grabbing references from film and TV. If you are only looking at the market that you're about to create for, you're bound to make the same crap over and over again. So start broadening your horizons a little bit. And even if your output, your final piece is meant for social media or YouTube, whatever, start from a place of higher quality or start from a place that you think is a better standard. And I can almost guarantee that your work will be exponentially better.